All right. I think we're recording. I think it's good. <laughs> so, uh, so listen, no matter what type of business that you're in, you, you, this is something I was thinking about. You've got to get noticed above the noise. And let's say you're getting noticed, but there's no engagement with the audience that you're looking to serve. What do you do? Well, I've got the perfect guest for you today. And, uh, he, you know, my, today, my guest today is going to offer you an option. And I'm going to get in trouble because I might mess up his last name. And it is a sin if you're a host and you don't practice the last name. I'm going to see if I can get this. Matt Mounier. Nice. That's it. I did it. Well, so, so Matt is uh, Matt's a leader in the mortgage industry. For those of you that may not know Matt, he's a leader in the mortgage industry. He's learned a few things about getting attention and standing out by using video. Isn't it perfect that we're doing a, uh, a, a video interview today? I'm sure he'll give me some feedback afterwards. He's not only used video effectively to build his business, but he's been asked by others to help them do the same in and outside his industry. So today we're going to get to know a little bit more about Matt and about how to tell your story on video and increase your engagement. How's it going, Matt? It's going well. Thank you for uh, having me. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Um, I've seen you speak a couple of times. I'm not sure if you knew that. It's like, oh my God, where have you seen me speak? I had definitely. <laughs> was it good? No. <laughs> I really have. I really have. And uh, I was really excited when Bob Dietrich uh, virtually introduced us. And so it's, it's fun to get to know well, what makes this guy tick. And that's really the purpose of today's, today's little interview here is to get to know you and why you do what you do. Um, and make sure before you leave today, maybe you could leave us with a couple of tips. And I know this is a bit of a teaser. People need to go and contact you and, and I think watch some of your talks uh, a little bit more extended, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, just to kick us off, why do you do what you, what inspires you? What inspires me? Uh, that's a great question. I think the, sort of the root of where all my inspiration comes from and like from the very beginning, and I guess is kind of like this, it started on the basketball court that I wanted to be a, a good basketball player. Um, and that motivated me. And then I wanted to be good in school. I wanted to get good grades. Um, and I, I don't think it's one of these things that a lot of people say that they want to be the best or they want to be, um, you know, this great person, have all the money. I think for me, it's a lot more about uh, being remembered, I guess, as someone that did go out there and, you know, give it their all and um, knowing that I'm not going to be the best right away at everything that I do, but it's given me a lot of like peace and satisfaction to uh, enjoy this crazy journey that we're all kind of on, I guess. So, yeah. What got you, um, what, uh, you know, I know that you're a leader in the mortgage industry. And what I'm curious about is that your topic isn't particularly mortgage specific. Um, what got you excited and inspired to get out there and share how to get noticed and how to get attention and, and engagement on video and mentor other people? Right. I, so I'm in an industry that is basically years behind like current day marketing. People are still spending a lot of money on direct mail. People are still holding open houses. People go to caravans and things like that uh, in order to meet people, meet new agents. Um, I mean, people are cold calling, all these different sorts of avenues. And when you think about like how much time people are spending on social media, how much time people are using, uh, you know, even spending time on their phone. Uh, right now, people don't even like watching commercials. People don't like answering their phone. It's a interesting situation of how we're still trying to get people's attention um, when it's really just not there. We're, we're seeing uh, ROI go down on all of those things over the years. And I think it was really like taking a step back and getting out of our industry and figuring out what are all these other people doing out there that are you know, making a lot of money doing marketing and things like that and kind mm -hmm. of step out of our industry and figure out, okay, how can we improve what we're doing? And that was really the whole idea of there's people making daily, weekly videos. There's people that are doing podcasts. There's people that are doing um, 
Instagram ads and Facebook ads and all these different avenues. And it's been uh, really trying to figure out that niche market. Um, a lot of people, I guess right now, as it's coming up, people are like, all right, I need to get things out on Facebook. I need to get things out on social media. But I think that there's a little bit of uh, being like genuine that's kind of being lost as well. So I think mm -hmm. our big thing is being genuine and providing great information and really hitting uh, that attention span that people have to watch a video about mortgages. How is it, how has the response been um, with, and here's my, where I'm coming from with this is that, you know, you're in an industry, people have been doing it a certain way for a while. Here's this young, fresh, energetic guy coming in, I can only imagine, and kind of shaking it up and, you know, you know, rising to the top. I mean, this is what I see with you is like, man, clearly whatever you're doing is working and people got to take notice of like, who the heck's he think he is? Are they, are, do you find people are adopting some of your <laughs> strategies or are they resisting it? You know, it, it's one of those things that it's kind of like public speaking that people, um, there's people that don't like doing it. And when people do it and they do it well, they're impressed. Um, I guess it's kind of the feedback that I'm getting back. It's the same thing if you're putting videos out there and you're doing a good job and you're making good videos, people are like, wow, I could, I could never do that. You know, that type of response. Um, I'm sure, I mean, I have not been confronted and been told that my videos are awful, but I'm sure that there are people out there that think that, um, you know, just completely against social media, people that think that, you know, Facebook and whatever else and all this video stuff is just a bunch of garbage. I can still, you know, pick up the phone and do the same type of stuff. But I think for me personally, trying to get noticed by these people that I've been in the industry for 15 to 20 years, uh, bringing something refreshing and new is something that can separate you apart from, uh, you know, uh, your sales pitch. What do you, you know, what do you have to offer me? You know, you need to have something a little bit different, a little thing that, you know, catch someone's ear, I guess. Well, I think you, you touched on something that really caught my attention there. And that is, you know, there's what I'm taking away is there are when you start to rise above the noise, when you start doing something that's different than someone else. And really, if there's a noise level and you start rising and you kind of, you know, your head's popping up up there. As a mentor, had always told me, he goes, Thomas, you know what, as you develop celebrity, there's also anti celebrity. And so it's almost you, you actually know what I'm talking about is that the people, the people that love you, the lovers are going to make themselves obvious to you. And they're gonna say, oh my God, where the heck have you been? You totally caught my attention, you know, based upon what they say. And then you're also gonna have the haters are gonna hate worse. And they're like, dude, that's so stupid. You're awful, you should die. And I'm like, you know, it comes with the territory, man. You're gonna get both of those. Do you wanna be average and just and sink into the noise and do average or do you wanna stand out? And, and I mean, shoot, that's the name of, that's the name of your talk. I mean, how to, how to, what was it? I'm going to forget this now. I know it's about engagement. Yes. How to tell your story on video and increase your engagement, you know? Yep. So, so let's talk about that. Um, let's jump into that. Um, what, if I had to, gr well, I am grilling you in a very short period of time is top three points. We'll come back around to some of your experience. Okay. Uh, but I, I want to jump right into like, what are those, what are a couple of things that people that are listening and let me give you a little context in case you weren't sure that, you know, the majority of folks that are, are listening to this and watching us right now, these are people that either aspire to be a speaker, trainer, or facilitator, take their game to the next level. They're just getting started somewhere. They are in the speaking, training, facilitating, communicating role. What, in your opinion, from your bias, uh, what do you think that, that they can do in terms of the video? Absolutely. So, I mean, this is above all, I think if you're going to start getting into video, you need to uh, figure out who your audience is. Obviously, everyone tells you you need to know uh, who you're talking to. I guess like the, I'll just call it an avatar, I think is like kind of like the term that you use for that. Um, but I think just continue. So it started out being, okay, we talk to realtors, but um, it's not uh, concise enough. 
to really be like, okay, how are you going to attract all the realtors? You're not going to be able to do that. So you need to keep uh, siphoning down until you really get to your your avatar, like this one person that you are thinking about that this person is going to be the one that listens to you talk. This is the person that's never going to miss a video. This is the person that's going to share it, tell all their friends about it. Um, and I think that is huge when you're starting to put things out on social media. And you're not, you're not just, this is not just something that you learned, but this is something you've proven for a fact is when you're speaking to this person, you actually see their eyes, you know what they're, desires are, their needs, you know about them. That's what I'm hearing. Correct. Yep. And I think when you get too general and you kind of broaden yourself out, you lose those people, you lose the raving fans, you lose the people that are going to just be talking nonstop about you. Um, and you're just kind of casting a wide net, hoping that something kind of is attracted to it instead of like going after uh, a very specific audience um, of people. Um, Beautiful. So, I mean, that's the first step. I think the next step is if you're, is just getting comfortable uh, doing some type of public speaking. If that's joining a Toastmasters, if that's doing a uh, practicing elevator pitches, if that's filming yourself speak in front of people, uh, you need to get comfortable because it's a whole different dynamic when there's a bunch of cameras and lights on you and you're asked to run through a, a right. teleprompter or be natural on camera. It's, uh, it's even, it's more, it's different from giving a public speech as well. Uh, our first kind of role uh, with videos, it probably took us um, a few hours to get like three or four uh, one minute commercials done. Um, just an, an incredible amount of time. And we were just thinking back, like, you know, all those people that talk about being on set and like how exhausted they were, like we were, it's true. Like you actually get like exhausted and mentally exhausted of just messing up, fumbling over the words not being natural at all on camera. Um, and I think just improving your public speaking is going to give you um, leaps and bounds in front of everyone else who's trying to do video. Right. And then I think the last step is just having, um, so you have your audience, you have, you're an awesome public speaker. I think you also need to have a, a good person video taping you and editing it. If you're not good enough yourself, it's definitely something that you should be investing in. Um, it's worth the money to have a clean video because people that are in the marketing industry are going to have a respect for you. And then you're also going to play at a level higher than everyone else who's trying to run to the market late. They're just not going to be playing uh, in the same ballpark as you if you have a clean finished product like that. Uh, on that, on that, to what degree do you feel someone should make it look perfect? I don't know if it's about making it look perfect per se. I almost feel like it obviously needs to be professional. Um, and I think it needs to look like it wasn't taken on your iPhone per se, or you had, you know, some crummy type of video production that you went through. I think that people can notice just from the grains on your face, if how you shot the video and if it looks really good and if it doesn't, and, um, I would say that you would want to be pretty close to perfect, but um, obviously, you know, I think it's tough to tough to say that it would, you know everything is going to. What be about perfect. what about the? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on you a little bit. <laughs> it's like what what about the what about the perfectionist in the room? What about the perfectionist speaker? It's like oh man, do I have to have a great tri a tripod? Do I have to have the greatest lighting? Uh, well, what about you guys? You guys are doing this interview and you know, you aren't in the studio. Oh man, I can't use video. We're not, <laughs> We're not in the studio. Uh, so we started, we, I, me, my, I am a perfectionist. Uh, when I first started public speaking, I needed to memorize every single word and I would practice, practice, practice until it was just dialed in and that was it. That's how I did speeches. So it, when I jump into something new, it's kind of has to be the same way. So when we first started making videos, it was a perfect run through commercial and it, it had to be perfect. I wanted the background, right? I wanted all, I wanted all the lights. I wanted the, you know, top of the line camera. Um, so that was totally hundred percent me. Um, as we're continuing to like develop these videos, I think that we are, um, 
obviously the return is going a little bit down. Um, if you're thinking about like how many people watch your show or watch something, it's how are you, how are you going to stay fresh? How are you going to stay, stay new? And I think bringing more options to the table than just like a, a one minute commercial is kind of where we're headed. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, if we were going to talk about some of the people that are like just blowing people out of the water right now, if we were going to talk about Gary Vee, who's doing all sorts of different types of videos, he's doing daily videos, he's doing Ask Gary Vee. Um, and before he was just doing him in front of a, a cruddy camera talking about wine. Like that's all he did. He made thousands of those. And now he has all sorts of different things going on. There is and something I, to be said about that. Mm -hmm. it, there is something said about there is, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I see cases like him and some others is like, turn on the camera and actually say something, get past the, the perfectionism. However, that said, and I want to come back to your point here is that don't underestimate production value. If you can do the production, you know, a great production, awesome. But what I'm hearing is don't let it get in your way though, of your passion, like really start. Absolutely. You'll get better. And it's it's interesting because when he was making those credit videos, no one else was making videos. So he was just in a <laughs> legal zone, right? He he didn't really have to compete with anyone for attention. Um, but now, I mean, I I follow a ton of real estate agents. I follow a ton of different individuals that are like in sales, and everyone's trying to put out videos now. And if it's because of you know Gary Vee, kind of you know paved the way for how productions are supposed to look and how they're supposed to be cool and everyone's supposed to, you know, enjoy, you know, the content that you're getting. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, in a, in a world where there are more competitors, you need to figure out a way to separate yourself. But I don't think that um, getting, not getting out content is an answer. Right. You know? I think content's huge as well. Um, putting it okay. out there. So, um, all right, and I know we're just kind of we're kind of teasing this a little bit, and we only have a few minutes to um, just kind of go over some of your top tips and get to know you. Obviously, if someone wants to contact you and uh, learn more about what you do, or even speak to their organization, would you be open to that? Would you be open if people wanted you to speak to their organization, Absolutely. or even have you coach them? Right. Yeah. I mean, we. I mean, that's basically, I mean, it's not what I do on a daily basis, but when I sit down with uh, real estate in, agents or other industry people, uh, yeah. I mean, we always find ourselves talking about, hey, what are you doing on social media? How are you keeping people's attention? Um, totally. And I mean, that's really what it comes down to and uh, being able to speak in offices and I've spoken in front of different caravans about this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it would totally be. The, um, okay, so so what's the best way for someone to connect with you? What are your what are your favorite channels on uh, social media? Favorite TV? channels? I mean, if someone shot me a DM, I would be uh, very likely to answer. No, I'm <laughs> no, I mean, I I have I'm attached uh, by the phone on my hip, but I mean, I'm I'm open to connect with anyone, follow you know, follow back, all that type of fun stuff. If okay. If you and so we're going to put your information. We're going to put your information. Uh, obviously, when we when we when we publish this, uh, we'll put your information there. Um, is it? Uh, do you find you? What's your What's your favorite way to be contacted? Even though I'm going to put some other ways to do. Right. It. I mean, I, I mean, by phone. Okay. Like Fair enough. enough. We'll make sure that's there. We'll make sure that's there. So <laughs> here, I want, to, I want to recap some of these points and then get back to you as a, as the person. Three things I'm going away with is number one, and this is all about how to tell your story on video and increase your engagement, is uh, number one, who is really know your specific avatar. And what I'm hearing from you, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, get really deep into what that is. I mean, a full sensory type of a thing, the demographics, the psychographics, the all of that. Who is this person? If it's a man, it's a man. If it's a woman, it's a woman. Speak to that person. and because you're going to, those people will know you're the one to serve them. So that's number one. Number two, uh, getting comfortable, getting comfortable on camera, which I also took away with, some of us never get comfortable on camera or in front of people. So I looked at it as, as being, at least becoming more confident, at least bringing some confidence, even if you're not Absolutely. comfortable. <clears throat> and number three was having a really good editor, production value. <laughs> it goes a long way. <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to go back to you. It, when you 
take a look at your journey, uh, your journey as a teacher, as a facilitator, as a trainer in your field. Um, what do you feel made the greatest difference in your life as a communicator? What, what kind of took your game up? Um, what took my game up? I think, I mean, I, in college, I dreaded reading books. Like that was not something that I enjoyed doing. And once I started getting into this whole sales world and realizing like, I didn't know anything, like what the heck am I supposed to do? Like go crush the pavement? Like, what does that mean? Um, so I'm, you know, looking up online and like following, I don't know, watching videos of Tony Robbins and all that sort of stuff. And I was just like, all right, I need to start. I see all these things as top CEOs read this many books every year. Like I'm basically the CEO of my company. What the, I should be acting like one. So right. uh, just change a few things in my life. Like when you wake up, you go work out, you get all these things done. You read, you know, 10 pages or 15 minutes you spend with the book. Uh, and I have just found that that's like, it exponentially made my entire sales and life skills just so much better. Um, yeah. So along along that line, if you if you um, if you had if you could start all over again, if you could really start all over again, and thinking about you developing yourself as the communicator that you are today, uh, what would you have done differently? Would you have done something earlier? Not done something? a really good question i would have done i would have done a lot more public speaking in college um and right. just when i first got into the industry i think being able to do public speaking or do things like that will just completely separate you from everyone else i mean i don't know what the statistics are let's say it's 93 percent of people fear public speaking more than death or whatever you know like it's a ridiculous amount of people that just won't do it. And um, I was in the same way. I didn't want to do it. I didn't see the value in it uh, mm -hmm. until like I started actually like putting myself out there and seeing the results from it. I would have definitely uh, latched on and done a lot more public speaking uh, early on. Mm -hmm. Um, is there is there something that if when we think about putting social correctness and you know political correctness aside, it, what's if you were coaching new speakers coming up? And I mean, I know you're a young guy now, which come on, you're a good communicator. Let's just call it like it is. You're you're clearly ahead of someone else. All right, let's just put it that way. So let's say it's coaching someone. What do you think that someone really needs to hear? And don't be nice. Like, what should they be doing right now? to become the best communicator that they can do, or the best communicator they can be. They can be. So I think a lot of, especially me, I, I'm the same way. I get these awesome ideas and I just sit on them. And I don't do anything with them. And I know I should be doing them. And I think it really comes down to like looking in the mirror and figuring out how competitive you really are. Um, and the only person you're competing with is that other person looking right back at you. Um, because that's the person that's going to get you off, you know, your seat and get you start grinding and doing all the things that you know you should be doing. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's tough. I'm like, I'm not going to say it's easy to all of a sudden pick up all your things and be like, I'm going to go be an awesome public speaker. Like if all these things that you want to accomplish, It's just knowing that, you know, you're competing with yourself. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what other people think of you. It doesn't matter what they stuff. Um, I don't know. I think. You're there. I'm here. <laughs> yes, you're there. <laughs> you faded out just a bit, but we got the, we, here's the part I was taking away. And this is a great way, way for us to, to wrap us up today. And is that. Uh, what I'm hearing is get out there, stand up, speak out, whatever's on your mind, whatever you want to share, get up and start speaking. You don't know what I mean? And I'm, I'm reading into this is like, you don't know how, you don't know the, the, 
the model of possibility that you can even be for someone out there until you start getting out there and speaking. Might it be messy? Might it be a disaster? Whatever, but, but be open. Be open with that. Yeah. Right. So cool. Well, thank you, Matt. We're going we're gonna to put your contact information down at the bottom. So we're going to have that for you. Uh, so people can get a hold of you. Thanks so much for sharing your time and energy uh, in sharing some of these top three things that people can do to tell their story uh, on video and increase their engagement. And, um, I certainly hope uh, a lot of the listeners uh, come over and contact you. I know you enjoy what you do. And again, you're a great communicator. So keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right.